Well, here we are in the shed again at the end of another lovely day. Not like it is down in the south of England in 20 degrees warmth, more like about 7 or 8, but it's still sunshiny. Today I've ordered a load of paint to paint, to finish painting the SRX 400. Ordered some more paint for a 600 I need to paint in the next 12 months worth. And a load of other paint for various other jobs. Postage to Orkney is £28, so the more I put on the order, the cheaper it became, so to speak, per item. So, that was £280 spent of money I probably don't have. I have just sold a KMX125. Uh, I sold it, my daughter sold it down in Hull. And with that money, part of that money is going towards the paint. So it's been reinvested in another motorbike. The rest of it will be spent on helping to get through this month as we are at the moment in this um, situation where we can't work. And we've got to be socially isolated to try and beat this flu um, virus. So that money will go to help us get through the end of the month. And after that there is uh, more income so we're not worried about it. We are not on the bread line. We always could do with a bit more but we're not on the bread line. But what it does do, when I think about it, is that I don't sell bikes. I'm one of these people who buy bikes and somehow I just store them away somewhere. So it doesn't fall very well when the guy who bought it off me has rang me back and said it's a really good engine, which I knew it was. Uh, so I feel like I've just given him a good bike. Still, I don't like to sell anybody anything that's rubbish. Uh, and I'd rather have it back if it was broken. And that really leads me on to this shed, really, and life in general. Um, shed life is a symptom of all my life. It's, it's part of the experience of all the experience of messing with bikes since I was 12. And the first few years was more or less messing and breaking rather than messing and fixing. As is all 12 year old self led boys and girls. Um, my father was not blessed with the mechanical mind. He had many gifts but mechanics wasn't one of them. Um, in fact, he hated motorbikes, full stop. But when we look at my life, I always look at stuff. And you, it's To me, life is a balance between acquiring stuff and acquiring experience. Some people acquire lots of stuff and they're going to do lots of things with the experience when they retire. And other people spend all their time doing experiences and have very little stuff they own. And the majority of us fall in between the two of them and try and have a balance between stuff, all this is stuff. To me it's useful stuff, to my right it's rubbish. I've always acquired tools as I've gone along and I don't tend to throw them away because sometimes I've got a job to do so I'll buy a tool just for that job and I might not use it again for two or three years but over 40 years that has paid for itself. The downside of that is you need a bigger shed as you get more tools. And also 
why like many people got married started a house and that focused much more my self onto that so I stopped acquiring stuff for motorbikes and more for a house and setting up a home had three kids so again all shifts all, all your money seems to go into this bottomless pit called children which I wouldn't have it in any way since they've uh, become more adult I've been able to acquire even more stuff um, and when people look at my shed and the tools I use and they're 18, 19, 20 they look at it thinking isn't he lucky and the reality was when I was 18, 19, 20 I only had a socket set a set of spanners and hammer maybe a hacksaw just like they've got but 40 years later I've got enough to do loads of jobs but as always there's always another tool some more stuff I have been lucky because I've done lots of um, experiences. I, when I was younger, I climbed, I walked, mountaineered, potholed, canoed, all sorts of things. I've run marathons. I know it's difficult to believe, um, and I've done endurance races of forty-five miles with full pack. Done all that. And then I've also done all that playing on the beaches and so on with the kids. I've done all that. All cost money, but I wouldn't change it. What brought this conversation on, really, is that the last few weeks, things have happened in my life. Uh, some of you may know that my father died about four weeks ago. He was 92. He wasn't well. Uh, and he's recently moved to live with my sister. And on the day he actually moved to see my sister, he had a diabetic hyper event and then had a heart attack and ended up in a couple of weeks in hospital before he moved to my sister's house. And what, four weeks ago, he had another heart attack and died. Yet, he too is my somebody you always looked up to, and you look at uh, that's when you look around to think, what stuff have you got? What experience? He lived through the Second World War. Uh, he joined the army in '45. Had a career in the army. Fought in Korea, Malaysia. Don't know what he did. Never spoke about it. I know he spent a lot of time with, serving with the Gurkhas. Uh, and then he came out and had a career in the civil service. Um, he brought up a family of five. We were never rich. We were not poor. Uh, we always had what we wanted. And I look at him and I look at myself. And I tried to copy him. And I say to people, try and balance your life so that you have a bit of stuff and a bit of experience. Value your family. And luckily, I had said to my father and mother, because my mother's still alive, I told them how much I love them. I also told them, uh, thank you for bringing me up. It's one of those things that you do, or do not do, because it's that unspoken words. So I, having moved to Orkney, uh, 600 miles from where they lived, uh, gave me the opportunity to say it to them. So I was lucky. Um, and my last memories, good memories of him, was walking to the end of his garden, because he had an acre of garden, and that was his life, his hobby. 52 years he had that garden. And he walked up there, and he usually used a mobility scooter, but the day before he moved he walked up with me, and we walked around to his allotment where he grew his vegetables. We talked about what he grew and the trees in the orchard and the sheds and the tools. And we walked back after about 45 minutes. 
and I think that's the last time we had a really good one to one and I look back and I realise that we talked to each other as man to man and I'm sure we did it before that but somewhere between 18 and then I became his equal and my advice to all fathers and mothers is make sure you tell your parents what I told mine and let your kids know that you love them not just um, the unsaid but the said and really that's what I've got to say today um, bit of an odd one really got it off my chest just lucky to be where I am and um, with all this flu business it does concentrate the mind as to our purpose on being on the planet and the fact that we've all got uh, a finite time whether or not you believe in God or you don't believe in God life is a finite time so may your God go with you if you have one and I'll see you next time.